Sterol inhibitor fungicides were first introduced for apple disease control in the mid-1980s. This fungicide class inhibits the synthesis of ergosterol, which is a key component of the fungal cell membrane. Now when sterol inhibitor fungicides, or SIs, when they were first registered, the control that we observed for apple scab was amazing. These systemic fungicides had outstanding curative activity. They could be applied three to four days after an apple scab infection period and still demonstrate excellent scab control. SIs were an important fungicide class and they really paved the way for the implementation of various IPM practices that focused on reduced fungicide usage and not worrying about fungicide application until after infection periods occurred. Unfortunately, our experience over time was that these practices and the use of reduced fungicide rates in tank mixes led to fungicide resistance development in the scab pathogen. Now resistance development to SI fungicides is quantitative, which means that increased rates of SI fungicides can still be effective in controlling strains that are gradually becoming more resistant to the fungicide. However, over time as we continue to use SIs in orchards, the composition of the apple scab populations gradually changed until most fungal isolates in the orchard were highly resistant to SIs. So as the overall orchard population shifted to resistance, SI fungicides became less and less effective, and finally we reached the status of practical resistance, where applications of SIs would result in, in control failures in orchards. So we've been at that stage of practical field resistance in Michigan for many years now with what we call the first generation SIs. So these includes fungicides such as Rally and Procure and Rubigan, which is a fungicide that's not available anymore. So our field surveys conducted in Michigan have shown that resistance levels to these first generation SIs have significantly increased since the mid-1990s. And these fungicides are now completely ineffective in controlling scab due to this resistance development. Over the last several years, we've seen the release of a few newer SI compounds that were used in Europe but not previously in the United States on Apple. And so we refer to these compounds, these SI compounds, as second generation SIs. Now these compounds include diphenyconazole, which is a component of Inspire Super from Syngenta, and the fungicide Indar from Dow. So both of these fungicides in particular have displayed good efficacy in controlling apple scab in our field trials conducted in MSU in an orchard where we have strains that are resistant to the first generation SIs. So the second generation compounds, again diphenyconazole and the compound in Indar, uh, they appear to have an increased level of intrinsic activity against a scab pathogen, such that SI resistant pathogen strains remain susceptible. So that's great because it continues to allow us to use an additional class of fungicide or a different mode of action for scab control. Now the bad news is that we know that the scab fungus has already developed resistance to the first generation SIs. And so we surmise that use of these second generation compounds does involve a high risk of resistance development. Diphenyconazole is not sold alone. It is a component of the premix Inspire Super. So this premix includes the anilinopyrimidine fungicide Vanguard. And AP fungicides work best under cooler weather conditions, temperatures in the 50s for example, and these fungicides are not as effective in controlling fruit scab as they are in controlling leaf scab. Nevertheless, Inspire Super is one of the more effective scab fungicides that we have available today and I believe we can use this fungicide at later timings in the primary scab season between pink and petal fall if we use the highest label rate, 12 fluid ounces per acre, if we tank mix with three pounds of a broad spectrum EBDC fungicide for fungicide resistance management, and if we only apply the fungicide as a protectant in advance of apple scab infection periods. So these are the best use strategies to maximize disease control and minimize the chances for fungicide resistance development. Indar is also a good scab material, although slightly less effective compared to diphenyconazole. Indar sold as a single compound. Again, it should be used at its highest label rate, eight fluid ounces per acre, tank mixed with three pounds of a broad spectrum EBDC fungicide, and applied as a protectant in advance of apple scab infection periods. So thus, to summarize, we've lost the first generation SIs in Michigan and in other regions of the country due to fungicide resistance development in the apple scab pathogen. We now have a couple of second generation SIs available, and these still represent an important class of scab fungicide that can play a role in our scab programs during the all-important 
pink to pedal fall timing. 